discussion. And I would like to give the floor to the next speaker. This is Andrei Brezhnev, who would speak about the monitoring of pseudo pseudoaxolative glaucoma, and he will speak about the specificity of this patients. Dear Presidium, dear colleagues, I would like to thank organizing committee and Professor Kurosheva for the opportunity to speak up. So let's try together to find out whether there are any specificities in the pseudo-accelerative glaucoma monitoring. Do we have to pay special attention to the tests to understand how frequently they have to be made, or maybe we can be guided those particular ideas on the monitoring that exists to glaucoma generally without the um, substitution into different subtypes. Before we start uh, the discussion on the pseudo accelerative glaucoma, We will celebrate 100-year anniversary since Finnish ophthalmologist John Lindbeck published the first data on the pseudo exclusive process, uh, pseudo exfoliative process. And also, I recollect Dr. Kroll, who studies on pseudo exfoliative process, are uh, the fundamental in our country. Currently, pseudo exfoliative uh, syndrome is very prevalent pathology of extracellular matrix, which gives the extra production and accumulation of pathological extracellular material in different intra and extraocular bodies. Glaucoma, which is developed as a result of pseudo exfoliative syndrome, is called pseudo exfoliative glaucoma. We speak a lot about the role of syndrome in the modern ophthalmology practice, but main manifestations. But what is important in the clinical practice is, we may say it's a risk factor that worsens the glaucoma course. It's cataract mainly of the nuclear type, dystrophic changes of the anterior segment of the eye. And the next decades, uh, we accumulated a lot of data on the um, uh, association of uh, uh, pseudo exfoliative uh, process with eye catastrophes. And definitely for surgeons, what is very important is that pseudo exfoliative process is a possible source of multiple intra and post op complication. Also, identification of pseudo exfoliative material in different exocular tissues, brain, skin, liver, r kidneys, lungs, heart, all that allowed at the end of the 90s to formulate this particular postulate that pseudo exfoliative syndrome, this is general biological problem of the first order in the center of which we are ophthalmologists. And definitely the significance of the syndrome sometimes lead to the fact that in some series journals and uh, in some reports of our international colleagues, mainly cataractal surgeons speaking about pseudo-exfoliative syndrome, they say like a nightmare. If we have uh, the same uh, attitude to the syndrome, keeping in mind the prevalence of the syndrome in the territory of Central Russia, so I think uh, almost half of this audience would have particular irrational fear or unfounded fears related to this syndrome because among cataractal surgeons, um, I think about 30 to 40 um, in some clinics, uh, all uh, surgery is cataract because of pseudo exfoliative process. Speaking about the epidemiology of this syndrome, this disease is very prevalent as seen all over the world, but it's very var variable in its rate. According to moderate uh, calculations, about 70 million patients, but in case of glaucoma, half of them are possibly underdiagnosed. About one fourth of patients uh, with syndrome do have features of ophthalmic hypertension, and one third of them demonstrates glaucoma full-fledged glaucoma. Keeping in mind that this is age-associated pathology, the number of patients is increasing, total, uh, constantly increasing. Speaking about the prevalence of the syndrome in the general population, so in patients 50 plus in the territory of central Russia, as a Kursk region, which I represent, 
the prevalence of pseudo-exfoliative syndrome is about 15 percent, one five, and definitely it's increasing with age. Uh, and in patients 80 plus, we can see pseudo-exfoliative process in every second case. Uh, the fact that the syndrome is one of the main ones, um, risk factors for glaucoma, uh, it's no doubt, it's a very known fact because there is increased rate of glaucoma in six to ten times uh, in case of pseudoexfoliative syndrome. Among the patients with pseudoexfoliative syndrome, the glaucoma rate is 20 times higher versus general population rate. Speaking about etiology, so currently there is enough data about particular genetic predisposition. Uh, here we speak not about the monogenicity because number of genes were described that are associated with risk of glaucoma and pseudoexfoliative process. Also, there are some trace factors, infectious ages, traumas, and number of other factors that were already mentioned by Olga Kiselova in her presentation, including Helicobacter pylori and uh, herpes simplex virus. Although these studies are of sporadic order and sometimes they're very controversial in their results, so, you know, complete understanding is not yet gained. Genetic studies of the recent decade demonstrated clear link with syndrome with the uh, polymorphisms of gene lysyl oxidase like enzyme in 100% of patients with pseudoexfoliative syndrome, we do observe the polymorphism of this gene. But in case of high specificity, still this biomarker has very low sensitivity because in the population of healthy volunteers without pseudoexfoliative syndrome, the polymorphism of this gene could be seen in about 60 to 80 percent of uh, volunteers. And every year we get new data on different genes more or less associated with pseudo-exfoliative process. So currently this is very active direction for the R&D. There is no quite clear understanding about the ultrastructure. Yes, we know that there is some protein part, there is glucose GAG, glucosaminoglycan surrounding environment. And in the protein nuclei, there are components of basal membranes, elastic connective tissue, amyloids, amyloid-like proteins. And three main theory of pathogenesis actually linked to the presence of all these substrates in the ultrastructure of pseudo-exfoliative material. From three presented theories of pathogenesis here, the dominating one is the theory that pseudo-exfoliative process is the systemic elastosis. This is a feature of microfibrillopathy of elastic connective tissue. So there is some evidence in favor of this particular theory of pathogenesis. And in the context of treatment and future treatment, we have to say that beside the traditional structures that we are used to, which is anterior capsule of the lens and iris, the structures that produce pseudo-exolative material is also a number of other tissues, including uh, epithelium of trabecular net uh, that possibly explains pretty temporary effect from a number of procedures that were offered before as a novel methods of pseudo-exfoliative syndrome treatment, pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma, uh, let's say trabecular aspiration, keeping in mind that uh, not only on the surface of trabecula we do have the pig pigment, but also uh, if you look at the posterior um, part of the iris, and uh, the trabecular per se is a source of production. This is obvious that all these measures could be very temporary. The risk of glaucoma in eyes with pseudo-exfoliative syndrome is a gradient of about 1.53% a year. So five years follow-up will give us from 5 to 30% in several populations of glaucoma. 10-year uh, follow-up gives us approximately a double rate, double rate of such patients. And according our data, gradient of progression is about two years. So 10 years of follow-up, patient with primarily a diagnosed syndrome, in the 30% of cases, they will have glaucomas. Pseudo-exploitative glaucoma per se in the structure of glaucoma process also takes quite a significant position so this is the data on the pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma prevalence 
in the territory of Russia. Here you see that very recent studies were made together with Professor Kurosheva in 2008. Here we have data in six regions of the central part of Russia. So approximately two out of three cases among all the patients with glaucoma, we identified pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma as well. Uh, this is open angle as well. And some other regions, and my region as well, this figure was 75%. So that means three out of four glaucomas, it was pseudo-exfoliative one. So the, the results are quite comparable with the epidemiological data of the most unfavorable on pseudo-exfoliative process countries. So this unclearness in terms of pathogenesis leads to the fact that there are different approaches to the uh, pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma classification and its place in glaucoma classification. If we speak about the uh, International Disease Classification IDS edition 10, there glaucoma pseudo-exfoliative belongs to the primary and it's the same code like primary open angle glaucoma simple. In the national literature, Russian literature, pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma traditionally belongs belongs to the uh, one of the forms of primary open angle glaucoma. In the international publications, there is another position prevailing one is that pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma is a secondary glaucoma. And uh, there is one more remark here that pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma is not limited just with open angle. It's not limited with open angle. According to some data, one fourth of patients with clo angle closure also could have pseudo-exfoliative stuff. Currently, it is found out that pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma has lots of specific features that allow to identify it as a separate form that requires totally different or, let's say, additional approaches in the diagnosis, monitoring, and treatment. About genetic specificity, I already mentioned biochemical specificity versus simple open angle glaucoma. We have totally different concentration of wet in the anterior chamber of some substances participating in the pathogenesis. These are markers of oxidative stress, endothelial dysfunction, and some other growth factors. Pathomorphology, changes of trabecular nut in pseudo-exfoliative uh, and glaucoma without pseudo-exfoliation, also quite different, which is shown in the slide, what is typical for simple glaucoma formation of this plaques plaques for pseudo-exfoliative, it's not typical. Specificity of optical neuropathy. So they say that pseudo-exfoliative process before the stage of glaucoma per se already associated with the elastosis of lamina cribrosa. And this is how we can explain such pronounced and fast progressing degeneration and progressive degradation of the ophthalmological functions. Biomechanical uh, properties of fibrosis capsule in terms of central thickness of the retina. So there is data that in pseudo-exfoliative process, these parameters are lower versus general population and in standard open angle glaucoma without pseudo-exfoliation. So everyone knows this classical picture of pseudo-exfoliative syndrome, but this is already a terminal stage. Terminal stage that passes through other stages before. Speaking about the informativeness, so these depositions uh, are seen only in two out of three patients, 64%. Central localization, central disc uh, seen in 71, and only in maximum mediasis we can identify all the patients that have clinical features of pseudo exfoliative syndrome. The fact that not always syndrome is in the focus of attention of doctors is demonstrated to the data of our own studies. So we followed more than 200 patients at three stages of their visits. First primary visit, so that means outpatients, then hospitalized, specialized hosp hospital, where doctors uh, are very cautious in terms of that syndrome and they identified actively. And then third stage, when these patients were examined by a dedicated specialist who knows how to identify the syndrome, keeping in mind the micro features in the maximum mediasis. And you see in the same cohort of patients, look, the same 200. At the outpatients level, they identified about 30, 37 percent. At the hospitalized stage, they identified no more than 
60%, 50 plus, and finally, it appeared to be that among these patients, more than 70%, and in the hands of dedicated specialists, it was clearly seen. Localization of the pseudo-exfoliative material in glaucoma is very different. It's not limited, just uh, the um, uh, anterior capsule of the lens. You know, we can see it on the uh, surface of the vitreous body, in the terminal, we can see it in the, in the thelial of the retina, closer to the angle of the anterior chamber, and here it can be associated with the hyperdiagnosis in terms of uveal process, uveitis. And of course, these are thin links and to the anterior chamber. Uh, concomitant changes that could also influence both the quality of the diagnosis and quality of monitoring, well, it has already been mentioned, nuclear cataract, dystrophic changes of the anterior segment of the eye with the phenomenon of translumination, a gonioscopic picture with hyperpigmentation of the anterior chamber angle and uh, deposition of pigment as a dotted line uh, in the Schwalbe ring or rim, I don't know, and then weakness of zinc links with subluxation of the lens, then the presence of the synechia, where there were no manipulations before, and definitely rigid pupil, which has already been mentioned, and it causes very discomfortable situation in cataract surgeons. The specificity of clinical manifestation of glaucoma per se is characterized by a higher average age of patients at the moment of diagnosis, high level of IOP, although in the recent years there were several publications that demonstrate that there are cases of pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma, which is normotensive. But these are just single publications, and I think it's uh, mainly a setting a question whether it's new phenotype or not. But still, majority of cases of glaucoma, it is uh, a glaucoma with um, a, a moderate or a high IOP. And also the feature of this glaucoma is very pronounced daily or circ circadian variations, and this is independent risk factor of progression of glaucoma process and also requires correction in terms of particular drug treatment or surgical choice. All that gives us possibly this type of fast-progressing glaucoma, pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma, with particular loss of optical functions, visual functions. Speaking about the medical treatments, we can say that pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma is more resistant to drugs. We need more frequent switch to add-on drugs, to laser or surgical treatment. And last but not least, in the context of drug choice, this glaucoma is specifically required more effective, more aggressive, let's say, drug treatment as monotherapy. We speak about prostaglandin analogs, or it could be starting fixed combination. And possibly in the cases if patient comes in very advanced stages of the disease, then it could be starting surgery. There is one more nuance we have to keep in mind, both in, in the treatment and choice of drugs and also in the context of monitoring. When we speak about glaucoma patients, we should not forget that one of the factors that uh, is important in the management of patients is the quality of life. We know that uh, this pretty low quality of life could be worsened because glaucoma process requires long-standing medication treatment that can provoke the dry eye syndrome. As the studies show, international studies and our own data, uh, they say that pseudo-exfoliative syndrome associated with particular changes of functional parameters of tear worsening of uh, tear parameters even before glaucoma. It is uh, optimal that we should look, uh, choose cons conservative free, preservant free drugs and uh, reduce the uh, frequency of uh, installation. And this is the priority for these patients. And last but not least, in the context of monitoring, 
currently, if we look at the national guidelines, Russian national guidelines, so monitoring is follow-up assessment and prognosis of glaucoma process and is a part of the dispensary activities, which is a complex of diagnostic methods required to specify the uh, degree of glaucoma severity and the progression rate, which correlates with the particular objectives that we are setting in our treatment. And this is not just the preservation of the visual function, this is also preservation of the appropriate quality of life with affordable financial burden. There is glaucoma and there is glaucoma. Yes, we know this statement is known very well and for a long time. And there is a subdivision of glaucoma on the fast and low progressing. Usually, in the basis of it, uh, there is a progression rate that means reduction of the visual functions. Mainly, we speak about perimetrical, perimetrical characteristics here and particular parameter which is used in literature. This is 1.5 decibel a year and higher, which is everything that is high, this is fast progression, which is lower is, let's say, lower or mid-progressing. According to multiple studies, cohort studies, it was shown that the percentage of patients with fast progression glaucoma is a population of glaucoma patients from 5 to 25 percent, depending on the study, depending on the population. If we speak about different types of glaucoma, it is that pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma that is the majority of these fast-progressing cases. It also requires particular correction of the existing algorithms of glaucoma monitoring. Well, possibly we need to shorten the deadlines Possibly we need to introduce additional technologies, monitoring technologies, and definitely individualization and tailoring of approaches. If we speak about the guidelines of European Glaucoma Society, so during first two years, it is offered to have six perimetrical measurements a year, uh, first two years, two years. But modern realities, and this is the data of our British colleague published in 2013, so the left part of the slide shows you the number of visual fields measurements really made within the first two years. Usually it's two, three within two years. Almost nobody reaches figure six measurements in two years. But uh, measurement six, if it's the right part of the slide, you see the majority of patients get measurement six when the duration of disease is up to five years. And in some cases it's uh, uh, 15 years of disease, and this is already only six visits, six visits for perimetry. In this context, I would like to draw your attention to particular algorithms that were offered several years ago and published in the uh, National Glaucoma Guidelines. And here, the basis of these guidelines are studies of our colleagues from Russia and from CIS countries. So greatest contribution was made by Professor Kura Yedov, who is somewhere around, I hope. Yes, he's somewhere here. And also our colleagues from the UK made the greatest contribution. They offer a number of alternatives to those standards that were designed by Europeans, by European Glaucoma Society, I mean. And here we see that we need to keep in mind a number of factors that guide particular deadlines of monitoring of perimetry, tonometry parameter, of morphology parameters. So you see here that um, this is the target pressure and progression risk, keeping in mind all those risk factors from the first presentation and the duration of the disease and the previous control. So very tailored, very tailored approach in the context of glaucoma in general and pseudo exfoliative in particular. And it should be the mainstream. Yes, this is ideal world and this is very difficult to reach in the real clinical practice, but we never should stop trying to reach it. Finalizing, I would like to say that currently we received multiple data 
fundamental data reflecting specificity of pseudo-exfoliative glaucoma that allows to consider it not simply as a part of open-angle glaucoma, uh, but as a very special form of the disease that required, except standard technologies, the design of new specific approaches to early diagnosis, monitoring, medical and surgical correction. Monitoring requires uh, taking into consideration the clinical specificity, and we already talked about it, and in order to prove, improve quality of life of our patients, we need to provide proper control not only over glaucoma functions and parameters, but also we should control comorbidities from other visual organs, including uh, tear film, and in this context, we should select particular treatment or surgical intervention. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andre. I have a very short question, and please answer very briefly because we are very much pressed for time. What would you recommend in surgery? Because sometimes it requires surgery very frequently. Yes, thank you very much for your question. So currently, the golden standard in the treatment of pseudo-exploitative glaucoma is a classical trabilect trabilectomy. Thank you, very short. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. And, uh, Thank 